Okay. So we want to get back to hand recognition in Calgary. Uh, those who've known me for a while have heard me refer to nickels and dimes. The deck of cards is what it is. When you look at the deck of cards, you have a one and a four. This is a five couple. Well, how many of those are there? Eight. You have a deuce and a three, which is a five couple. How many of those are there? Eight. You have four fives, four nickels. What are we up to now? Eight, eight. Are we already at 20? And we've got all these dimes coming up. 16 dimes, 10, jack, queen, king, times four, four times four is 16, plus 20 is 36, 36 nickels and dimes in this deck. That's 70% of the deck. It's a powerful concept if you understand the working of You could carry it a step further and say, well, seven and eight is 15, and six and nine is 15, so the whole darn deck is nickels and dimes. But in terms of discarding, in terms of potential hand values, it is highly influenced just by how the deck of cards is, is designed. So, what counts? 15 for 2, you know that. If the cards total 15, it's worth 2. And by the way, there are some pretty long ones that people miss pretty regularly. In fact, you can list them later in the class. Uh, and if I don't get to them tonight, it'll be the start of the next class. Uh, there's a long list. Five card 15s are far more common than folks recognize. And they're very often missed when it comes to counting the 15. I showed a couple here that are four card. Four card. And there's one with five. But there's a whole long list of them. And it's amazing when you see it how often it's missed. Fair, two points. Three of a kind are six points. Why are three of a kind worth six points? Because there's three pairs. If you'll get a chart, a triangle. If you take three cards, put one at the peak in the corner of the triangle. You can see there's three distinct pairs. That's why it's worth six. It's not just a number somebody settled on. There's three pairs, and each pair is worth two. Four of a kind, I'm going to pass out a diagram here in a little bit. It's pretty complicated for some folks. And what you need to do in your mind is think of a square. Put a, put a four here, four here, four here, four here, and you go. One pair, two pair, three pair, four pair, diagonal are two different ones, five pair, and that diagonal is six pair. So it's six, it's, it's two worth 12 points because there's six pair. And you'll get a, a good chart to show you that. Some simple ones here, a run of three, six, seven, eight, run of four, eight, nine, ten, jack. And of course a double run, a double run is, is a three card run with a pair. It's a three card run with a pair. If it's a three card run with a pair, it's worth eight points. Period. Don't make any difference if it's jack, jack, queen, king, one, one, two, three, six, seven, seven, eight. You just add the 15s. We start with eight, or you can add the 15s first. That's generally the accepted thing to do, is I got four plus eight is 12. And that's all you need to do. You do not, I know, you don't, if, if there's some help to you in doing 15, two, 15, four, three for seven, three for 10, 
Did I get the pair? Uh, must be 10. Oh, I, I think I missed the pair. Oh, it's 12. Yeah, that's it, 12. So much easier just to know if it's a three card run with a pair, it's eight plus 50. If it's a four card run with a pair, it's 10. Here's a few examples. Triple run. Remember, a double run has a pair. A triple run has three of a kind. So could it ever be a four-card run? Could, it, could a triple run ever be a four-card run? No, it can only be a three-card run. And if you've got three fives and a four six, there's no way you can add another card if you've got a triple. So it's worth 15 plus 15. If you've got some 15 twos, in other words, three queens with the king jack is 15. Three deuces with the gray four is 15. Three sevens with the six eight is 15. They're all three card runs with a triple. They're all worth 15 points and you add any 15 twos. That's simple. 15 four plus 15. Oh, could you have 15 four plus 15? Think about that one. You can't have 19, can you? I mean, if you have a 15, a triple run, can you have a 15 four? Fifteen and four would be nineteen. Can't have nineteen. Why? Well, what do you mean you can't have nineteen? If you got a seventeen hand with a right jacket, I mean you got an eighteen hand with a right jacket, must be nineteen, right? Huh. No, not right. So triple run, and then of course you have quadruple runs, double double. That's not these eight ones, that's these ones with 16, you know. If it's, a, if it's got two pairs in it. Yeah. Unlike the eight three card run for eight with one pair, this one's got two pairs. Mm -hmm. Flush. You'll hear me say it pays to flush, and as we go along, you'll see a lot of evidence that suggests that that's so. Flush in the hand, got to be five of them in the crib. Some people call it nibs, knobs, call it whatever you want. Jack of his heels, there's no jack of his toes, by the way. So if you use jack of, the, jack of his heels, the other term is not jack of his toes. Uh, that, these are pretty common terms, but nibs, knobs, the right jack, whatever you call it is okay. There's a lot of hands that are frequently miscounted. Uh, some of the clubs emphasize them in their specialty hands, and hopefully folks learn that Raggedy Ann is 13 and Raggedy Andy is... Uh, see them all there? I see this one counted everywhere from 9 to 13 points. I've seen that wider range. I've seen some people take 9 for a raggedy end, and some take the correct amount of 13. So anything in between wouldn't be correct either. These are really commonly miscounted hands. 2, 3, 4, 9 with a 6 cut. I see them miscounted every week, sometimes by players who've played a long time. Two, three, four, nine with a six cut is nine points. For the same reason that two, four, six, nine with a five cut is nine points. There's 15, six plus the run of three is nine. I see people take seven every week. Seven every week. And they seem to think that that's correct. 
I don't know. Maybe you, you know, I'm standing up here offering some instruction, but I don't find that I can offer too much instruction in the course of a game when that occurs. I'd like to, but that's what it is. And of course, these two here are still quite frequently counted as 12 points. With the, with the ace, deuce, deuce, three, and a 10-pointer, it's 14. And of course, when you get the nine and there's two trays in there, it's 14. Every week, I see somebody take 12 for them and think they got them. So, and of course, you know, there's some 29. Everybody like to have that. 28s are a lot easier to come by. If you haven't had either one, get a 28 first or five or six times, and then you'll really appreciate 29 if it shows up. All 24 point hands. Uh, hey, Dave, could you hand out those? Uh, I'm going to tie in here pretty closely with the, uh, what I'm doing here now. You see here across the top, we have four sevens with a one cut. Here, we have a nine with three threes and a three cut. Here, we have four sixes with a three cut. Here, we have three fours and a seven with a four cut. Now, these actually are determined Thank you. the score of these hands, each of these four hands here, is 24 points. And one of the one of the ways to remember that is when it takes two. Here, what how many sevens does it take to make 15 with the ace? Two. two. So remember? We got six pairs, seven, seven, seven in the corner of the square. Put the ace in the middle, and you got 15, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 12 plus 12 is 26. Now, sometimes you'll run into, for instance, let's just say, If you had four threes and you cut a six, instead of, instead of a nine present, you got a six. How many of those threes does it take to make a 15 with a six? It takes three of them. Anytime it takes three of them to make the 15, it's a 20 point hand. Four deuces and a nine, how many deuces does it take to make 15 with the nine? Three. So you got 15, eight plus 12 is 20. It's universally true, always. If you've got four fives, there's 20 because there's a 15, eight and 12. If you cut a one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, it's 20. Four fives are 20, because it takes three of them to make a 15. And since it takes three of them to make a 15, there is 15 eight plus the four of a kind for 12. And you've got a couple diagrams there that kind of show how that works. Uh, This one here, that shows you've got four, four threes in that little square in the corner and a nine in the middle, four fours in the corner with a seven in the middle, and four sixes in the corner with a three in the middle, and you follow those lines in there with the diagonals plus the, the, the sides of the square, 
and you got 12 and 12. 15, 12, 2 times 6, and 6 pairs times 2, 12 plus 12. We we'll give you some other examples down here on that paper of, of hands where it takes three. Four fours with a three. You don't see it very often, very rare 20. It's 20 because it takes three of the fours to make 15 with the tray. There's only two ways to score 23. If you find 23 and it looks any different than this, it's because you don't have 23. If you got three fives with a six and the cut is a four, you got 23. If you got two fives with the ja two jacks, one of them is a jack of hearts and the, the cut is a five of hearts, you've got 22 plus the jack which matches the deck, 23. That's the only two ways you can score 23. 22 can only be scored with a pair of 10 pointers and three fives. It's always, it doesn't matter if it's two tens, two jacks, two queens, two kings. If there's three fives, it's worth 22. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22. <laughs> Twenty-one points is the largest hand possible with a flush. We, we pay for that sometimes on our unlimited nights and uh, hardly ever see one, but it, ha it actually is more common than is known. These could be any suit. You see, you start with, you start with 17 plus the suit. So they happen to show hearts here, but you, if you like clubs, you could make them clubs. Diamond spade. But if you've got a 17 point hand with a flush, you've got 21. Uh, I think some people throw it away, but it, flushes are extremely valuable. And we'll get into how many hands in this game are good scoring hands are the result of flushes. Uh, very, very high percentage. Royal Land. Anybody here had one? Usually not here, but you paid me for a couple. I had one. I had one years ago here, and then I found out it was really easy. I went to Reno, and I can you have it in the crib? Can you have it in the crib? Yeah. No. You're, you're right. You can't have it in the crib. Why? Why couldn't you have it in the crib? Two variations can't be the same too. Exactly. So the only place you can have it is in your hand. So that makes it even more rare. Anyway, I think the club still pays seventy-five bucks for it. Yep. And you, I bet you haven't paid one in nine years. Yeah, yeah, we did. Did two you get ago, one? We paid one? Recently? Yeah, two years ago we paid one. Okay. So it's two, six, seven, eight of the same suit? Eight, six, seven, eight of the same suit. Of the same suit. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. One of the reasons it's so rare, it's 11. See, if I got a one, six, seven, eight in a suit, that's 11 points. Well, very often when people pick up that hand, they've got an extra seven or an extra eight. So instead of keeping 11, they keep 12. They keep the double run for 12. And so very often they have the chance for a royal land, but they, they don't keep it because they sooner play 12 than, than 11. But it's a very, very rare hand. Uh, when they talk about 19 hand, you can't have a 25, a 26, or a 27 either. I mean, everybody talks about 19, but there's a, those four numbers. You can no way you can have them. I often use this in 
somebody moans about a zero hand, I say, you know, there's 220 ways to score a zero. And that's not counting, that's not counting the suits. I mean, then you're talking about like this. If you count the suits, in other words, each of these cards in a zero hand, if you took the 220 possible ways you could do that, and you consider that in each of those hands there are four different suits for each of the cards in those zero hands, there's over a million ways to score zero. But there are 220 ways if you just count the pips on the cards. Nine, king, queen, ten. And, a, and an ace on the deck. Don't, don't add up, don't count. Now, some of you can tell colors, right? Uh, is there anybody here as colorblind as me? I mean, hearts and diamonds and clubs and spades are the same color for me. So, and they don't make yellow cards. I could tell yellow. I could see a yellow spot on an elephant's butt for seven miles. But, oh, excuse me. <laughs> but if you look at this this way, you could. You see what these squares do? Well, this does the same thing. You see across the top here, it says clubs, spades, hearts, and diamonds. So we show a seven and a seven, clubs and spades, a club and a heart, a club and a diamond. Ooh. Then we got something here in the middle, spades and hearts, spades and diamonds. And then we got, since we started with two blacks up here, we end with two reds. Well, you see, you can walk a, an ace through that, same way you can on this square here. You can walk an ace through there and see that you've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. All different pairs. And if you can tell colors, and you've got two reds, two blacks, a black and a red, a black and a red, a black and a red, and a black and a red. And so that, that works out the same way as the square. 12 plus 12, if you're running a card through there. Or these could be threes, and you're running a nine through there. But works the same way. Kind of covered that already. Same thing here. We're talking about what constitutes 20. When it takes three, three deuces with the nine, three threes with the six, three fours with the three three fives with an off ten point card. They're all twenty. Oh question. Anybody have a question? You've got a paper with a triangle on it. Everybody got that? Not yet? Uh, yeah. I mentioned this triangle before. It's a simple way to look at three of a kind, but on the back of it, Back of it is a, we're going to talk some about flush, and hopefully you'll recognize flushes when they show. Very often, the best keep you can hold is a flush. But on the back of that triangle, there's a chart, 
show them should look like this. And if you look down that flush column, look down at six points. There's 1,199 ways to score a flush for six points. Look at the seven. Look at the ten-point column. The number down the left side is the, is the number of points in the, in the hand. There's 716 ways to score ten points with a flush. That's more than any other way. How about 11? You see the middle column where it says flush in the hand? Come down to that to 11 and you'll see there's 146. 146 ways to score a flush for 11. Look at 12 points. Look at 14 points. Look at 16. Look at 18. You see how many big scores are possible with a flush? Terrific. And, and often I see people throw away a suited 6, 7, 8, 9. A suited 6, 7, 8, 9 any one of those is a 20-point hand. If I cut any one of those, I got 20. Whereas if I hold it some other way, I'm going to have 16. And there's 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, there's a 9 of club. I, somebody made me these cards years ago. They really are not very practical. But they made them by hand. So I've hung on to them. Isn't that nice? Six, seven, eight, nine. Four. Fifteen, four. Run a four. And a flush of four. Four times three is twelve. Four, four. Does that seem like an excessive amount of foreplay? <laughs> anyway, look for those. Very fine hand. And they're, they're, more, they're more available than we recognize. The other thing is, how many cards are in a suit? Thirteen. Thirteen. So possible there's nine other cards that would help this that have nothing to do with these four. I already got these four. So I'm not going to duplicate any of these if I draw a club. But I'm going to add points to the hand for any club I draw. So, so watch for them. Big, big time stuff. And here's the reason it pays to flush. Now, by the way, is there somebody here that remembers when you had to pay to flush? <laughs> I do. Kids used to crawl under the petitions. They used to crawl. You had a coin slot on the toilet door. You had to put some money in it. I don't know. It's probably was a nickel or a dime, but that's what you had to do. A lot of places they had bus stations, hotels, and you had to pay to flush. So in, in this aspect of cribbage, we're talking about getting paid to flush. See, that's a much better proposition. And you often gain a point by holding a flush. A hand I see all the time. Somebody's got a deuce, deuce, three, four. Or they got a flush with a two, three, four, nine, or a two, three, four, eight. If they hold the flush, they start with nine points. If they hold the double run, they start with eight. 
And any card that makes 16 with a double run makes 16 with a flush. Plus, you've got an escape card if you want it on the pegging. See, if you've got 2, 2, 3, 4, and your opponent plays on your card, where do you go? But by holding the flush for one more point to begin with, you've got a card where if you don't want to peg, you can escape. Very, very valuable. Also, with a flush, it's more, it's easy to disguise in play. For instance, I happen to have a hand with a nine and a queen of spades. Once you see a nine and a queen of spades on the table, could be hearts, diamonds, clubs, does it start, why would you keep a nine and a queen? Got to have a flush. Well, I don't have a flush. I got two sixes with a nine and queen. And so by, by, by showing you two, two disparate cards, I create the impression. It's called faking a flush. We'll get into that in pegging. And it does have value. Very often you get pegged you wouldn't get otherwise once the person believes you're playing a flush. mentioned that. Of course, we went through this. That's that chart you've got. I want to talk a little bit about this knowing what you have before the start occurred. Recognize the scoring potential of your hand and know the count of the hand prior to the starter. I'm amazed how many people hold 10 points and don't know it. I mean, they, they didn't discover they had 10 points until the card is on the deck. Now, something must have been going on in the head that says, hey, I got 15, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. I don't know. Or does it just look good? I keep it because it looks good. I don't know. But speeds up the play a great deal. If you didn't do anything else, except know the count you have before the starter card, and then know how much the starter card adds to it. I mean, if it's a six, six, seven, eight, and the starter card is a queen, I don't think there's any need to recount. It's what you had to begin with. Now, if it's a one or a two, that's a different story. You pick up some point. But have in mind the cards that help your hand and the ones that don't. And sometimes keeping track of the ones that don't is a shorter list. That we've done. Should you count the 15s first? Do you count the 15s first or do you say I have eight plus 15, four? Do you say 15, two, four and I have a run of eight? Does it matter? Uh, Ch Chambers in his book says count the 15s first. 15, 2, 15, 4, plus 8 is 12. That, if you know the run is 8, or in the case of a 4 card run is 10, then it does make some sense to say 15, 2, 4, and 8, 12. Or you know, with, with players like you have in club, you can say, I have 12 and move 12. That, that's quicker. And people know if you have 12 or don't. Well, there may be some that don't. But, but I, <laughs> I think if you did it time after time, somebody would correct it. And you would realize there was nothing gained by taking too many. Now, when it's your deal, when it's your deal, it's important to think of, that you have a, an extended hand, that you have eight cards. You have eight cards. I mean, I see people deal who hold two sixes and two queens for four points. 
only time you'd ever hold that hand is on the other person's deal. I mean, it's the only four you got. You keep the two sixes and the two queens. But you would never hold that hand on your own deal. If you had some card close to the sixes, you would keep the sixes and put the queens in the crib. On the other hand, if you had queen, queen, king, one with two sixes, you'd dump the two sixes to the crib. So if you're dealing and you're looking at two nines and two kings as a hand, something wrong. One of the pairs needs to be in the crib. You're going to count the crib. So the crib is just an extension of your hand. You have the advantage of knowing that there's two points in there already. So, and the advantage of knowing if the starter card helps them. You put two nines in the crib and the starter card is a six. You've got a good piece of information that your opponent has no way to know. You know you've got a minimum of six points in the crib. And so, so it's important. Uh, don't keep that kind of a hand when you're dealing. Remember to flush. Look for flushes. If you think of uh, some hands are extremely good, two, two, three, four, what card doesn't add value to it? Is there a card among the 13 that doesn't add value to it? As a dealer, it also has great pegging potential. We'll get into that, but no, every card in the deck. So hands like that are really a potentially good scorer because every card that comes on the deck adds value. A lot of cards we hold, and we're going to get into some very clear examples of that. If you cut, if you hold two threes with a six nine, what helps it? A three six or a nine. That means 10 out of the 13 possibilities add nothing, but it's only six you've got. So sometimes, I mean, you've got to hold it. But I'll show you some tricks with that, too, where you can expand your thinking a little bit and increase your chances for score with a whole lot more cards that will help it. Now, if you'd be kind enough, there's a paper over there on that table called Key Connectors. I want to spend a little time on that, Key Connectors. I don't know that, that Key Connectors is, is my term. I haven't seen it used by anybody else, but... Uh, that's what I call them. And sometimes when you're discarding, you may not know what the averages are to your own crib or to your opponent's crib. But there are some cards that have greater value than others. If you're looking at the four small cards, the one, two, three, four, the three has the greatest value. <coughs> so when you look at putting if you only got one small card to put in your crib, let it be the three. It's the best of the lot. It's the key connector. Without the three, many times the small card don't amount to much. By the same token, avoid the three to your opponent's crib. Any one of the others is better, <laughs> lower scoring. And if you're looking at the value of these one, two, three, four, the one has the lowest value. The one has the lowest value if you put the one with the king or the one with the queen. And the next lowest value is the four, four king, four queen. And the next is the deuce king, deuce queen, so on. But the one with the greatest value is the three. It has greater value when you toss it to your opponent's crib, but it has greater potential value when you put it in your own. So it's a connector. Key connector, the tray. Put it in your crib when you can and avoid putting it in your opponent's crib. 
And of course, the five, that's why 10 king is at the top of the list. If you think of what is a five, a five works with a one nine, a two eight, a three seven, a four six, a six seven, and all those 10 point cards. So if you think about when you play nine games of cribbage, you might only get a chance to put a five in your crib three times during the night because it works with those other cards. One, nine, two, eight, three, seven, four, six, six, seven, and the 10, 10, 10, 10, Jack, Queen, King. <coughs> and of course, the five work with each other. So the five is a key connector, a multiple connector. It connects with all of the possible combinations in the deck. One nine two eight three seven four six six seven and ten jack queen king plus fives. So very potent card. Don't turn loose of it and try to get it into your crib without weakening your hand too much. And we're going to talk about that later and uh, discarding your own crib. We'll talk about sacrifice limits and how many points you can give up for putting certain discards in your crib. Among the mid cards, and those of you who have played a while have noticed this, if you want your opponent to have a 13 crib, give them a seven and a jack. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it might be a dozen with a seven king, but the seven is the key connector. And so when you're looking at those middle cards, there's a big difference. King nine, queen nine, Six king, six queen, eight queen, eight king. Last resort. It's better than some of the small card combination, like a three with a king or even the deuce with a king. The seven with a king is safer. But understand that seven is a key connector. And very often when your discard looks like garbage, they turn the crib for 12. And you'll say something like, and I tossed a seven queen. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> anyway, keep it. If you can only put one middle card in your crib, make it be the seven. In fact, some folks would sh sooner throw you a five to your crib than a seven. I've had them tell me that many times. That I would sooner discard a single five to a crib than a single seven. So keep the seven if you can. Among the 10 pointers, the jack is the key connector. And it's so key if you get in the habit of looking for ways to put the jack in your crib, especially when you're dealing. Two of the most frequent discards that are made by your opponent, they will take a chance on two 10 point cards to your crib, whereas they will not take a chance on two middle cards or two small cards. They'll give you a king queen, they'll give you a 10 queen. <coughs> what does the jack do for those? Already a run without the cut. So the jack is key when you're dealing. If you're going to put face cards in your crib, put the jack queen, put the jack jack, put the ten jack, but keep the king. You've got a six, seven, eight with a jack queen king, your crib. Jack, queen, keep the king with a six, seven, eight. Don't keep the jack. It's going to count more in the crib. And the other thing is, when you throw a jack, he connected. Remember, when you discard a jack to your opponent, you're taking a quarter point out of your hand and adding it to their crib. So you've, you've changed the composition there by half point because there's four jacks, and if you... If they're equally available, each one of them is worth 0.25, one quarter of a point. So if you take it out of your hand and put it in the opponent's crib, you've taken 0.25 out and added 0.25 to, to that crib, which is a difference of a half point. But if you don't know the discard averages, keep these in mind. You can just put a single small card to your crib, make it the trick. If you can slip a five out of your hand without too much damage to the score of your hand, do it. 
If you only have one middle card to put to your crib, make it the seven. And if you only have one ten-point card, make it the jack. Oh, uh, do you know, I think this is a good time to break. This is going to lead in right into next week's class on <coughs> discarding to own crib. And we'll play three games of cribbage if you can stay around that long. And now we'll waltz around here and look at what's happening. And I might even get a drink of orange juice. Thank you all. <laughs>